we'll just get right into how I met um, yeah. Rick. How did we meet? I'm not sure. Are we going? Yep, we're live. Um, cause I know. I think did you reach out to me first? I think so. I think. Uh, well, I watched you as. Hey, uh, real quick, give a give a, a fair intro. Let's yep. get right into it. Well, we're going episode forty three point five of Ooh. Menace and the Man. We'll call this. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> the half we'll call it like same way we did All the right, whatever the fight night that time. Okay. So episode forty three point five, Menace and the Man. We're here from. Great South Bay Brewery, Dennis the Menace, Stan the Man, and we're joined by Rick. Rick uh, Sabata, right? Is that how you s- s- pronounce it? Uh, yeah, Sabatka. Sabatka. Oh. Sabatka. Okay. There is a K in there, okay. right? Rick Sabatka from Great South Bay Brewery joining Menace and the Man here. How are you today, Rick? Fantastic. How are you doing today, Menace? I'm actually like a little bit tired today. But right. I'm here now. I'm, the energy yeah, levels are good. A training session. Didn't well, you? I went, uh, I worked. From 7 to 3.30, directly right to Long Island May, taught a private, showered, directly to Great South Brewery, and now we're we're kicking it. But I got a nice little cerveza in my hand. Yeah. It'll what kind? Of, this is the, the... Therapy, I believe. What the is therapy. this? Therapy. This is a therapy. This is therapy. a new It's one drink? of our newer beers. It's, uh, it's a session IPA. Session... Oh, dates back probably 100 years during the workforce where people are allowed to drink beer. Uh, during at, a work session. Yeah. Uh, like working, industrial working. They could drink at new, uh, at lunchtime if the beer was under 5% alcohol. Really? Wow. And it became a style of beer, session beers. And then, uh, you know, through the last six, seven years, session IPAs became uh, kind of a thing. So there are IPAs that are under 5%. Under 5%. But you can... We still hit it with a lot of hops, um, and it gives really that bright, hoppy, citrusy kind of New England style. To I it. tell you what, if I'm getting into hops, yeah, I won't be paid so on, now on I, the back end. I noticed, like, if you guys can kind of, now you can't see it around the corner, but back over there, you guys are brewing your own beer here, right? Yeah, all of it's brewed here. Yeah. There's, yeah. like, a whole window. We'll show it to the people in a photo, but... Yep. They have loads and loads of beer back there. Yeah, we got a big warehouse back there, and then we're another brewery is opening up in the back, in the uh, about ten thousand square feet of space. Ghost Brewing. So if me, so Ghost Brewing is if me and Stan the Man want to make a mess in the man beer, we could almost essentially hire you to brew or give us space to brew it. Or yeah, you could uh, hire us. Um, you know, there's some legalities in there where you right. have to maintain some permits and stuff, but. Uh, you know, in addition to our own brand, Great South Bay Brewery Beer, we brew for probably 20 other breweries. Wow. Yeah. So it's uh, it's good. It's good to help the, the craft beer culture, and it's it's good for us. It helps us grow and uh, helps a lot of other breweries grow. So I guess we go back to how we <laughs> met. How then we- we'll get into, like, what got you into beer and then the steps you took to get to where you are today. Sure. So I think I how mean, we I watched you. I've been a big UFC MMA fan. I always have been, and I hardly miss a fight. I remember watching right. you rise, you know, into the like top the five, number the, six uh, in the world, number yeah. six in the world. Yeah, and you went beat, over Max Holloway. You beat Max <laughs> Holloway. <laughs> you know, and you beat a lot of guys, a lot right. of serious guys. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, you were, you are, you're a phenomenal fighter. Thank and you, I remember man. watching, and then I heard you were from Lindenhurst. Okay. And um, I must have reached out to you and said, hey, come Dennis. down for a beer, right? Yeah, come on down. And then I think you came down one weekend where I couldn't be here, and you hung out, you brought some folks with you. And my, right. My, uh, some of the guys here, Greg was just talking about, it. he goes, yeah, I remember when you came down here. Right, I was behind the bar we by had the other night. Some beers. Yeah, I was we pouring some beers for people. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good time. So it was, that was cool. And then, and uh, then you started sponsoring me for you got on on board, sponsored me for a few fights. Yeah, yeah. A, a grappling match not too long ago. Yeah. So as soon as I met him, he was on the on board. Yeah, which well, is like you said, he was a big fight fan. So once you see a guy from Long Island, you're you're in it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, where are you from originally? Originally from upstate. Well, so is he. Yeah, I remember we talked about that. Yeah, I'm Binghamton area. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're north and north. then oh, no. Binghamton, west, right? Binghamton's a little bit more towards like Gregor, right? Like the Rochester, yeah, yeah, a little bit, right? 
Yeah, a few hours, but it's uh, kind of mid-state if you're yeah. considering upstate. Well, like we went to Socrates, and I was like, oh, I thought I thought it was further than it was. It's just yeah, kind of so right over the bridges and a little bit. Just just north of the New York City, you know. Yeah. yeah. A couple hours up the uh, up the throughway there. Yeah. And then, so when did you have your first beer? When did I have it? When? when I How drink? old were you when you had your first beer? My first beer. Well, you know, I'm 49 now. So, you know, when I was a teenager, it was a little more relaxed back then. My dad was really always into different not, beers. Not tasted your first beer. When did you have your first full beer? First beer? You know, it's funny. I was just... Um, we went out to Water Zooey last night. He had a pot of mussels, and I had oh, some great yeah, Belgian yeah, beers. Yeah. And uh, they really have a nice uh, menu full of beers there. So anyways, uh, my parents actually took us to Europe when I was, I think, 14 and 15 years old. Okay. And in Europe, I think the drinking age was like didn't exist, or it was like 16, maybe 17. But there's a picture of me drinking a Belgian beer, eating a pot of mussels. I think I was 14, 15 years old. And was it uh, love at first sight or uh, love at first taste? It was. I, I loved both of that. And uh, it was kind of, a, I don't know, part of the dream. I've always been enthusiastic about beer. My dad was, and still is, extremely enthusiastic about beer. He brewed. So is he proud of you now? Like, my son, he's doing <laughs> it. <laughs> I think so, but yeah. Most parents are proud. Like, my son, he's a professional fighter. He's a you know, baseball player. Or, you know, he's a lawyer. He's like, my son brews <laughs> beer. <laughs> I, I think they all, you know, my parents look at me like, wow, you're able to do all this, you know, and, uh, and, you know, uh, kind of turned a hobby and just kept going forward with it. And really it just kind of grows, grows every year. So let's keep that question going. Stan, how old were you when you had your first full beer? I remember vividly the first time I tasted beer. I was very little, and my dad handed me a beer. I took a sip, and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. Because you, you, oh, he handed it to you. I was you a, didn't, like, sneak one? Nope. Like, oh, well, I'll be like my dad. I said, like, what is that? My dad, like, they thought it was a funny joke. Like, let him drink it. I took a sip and spit it right out. Like, beer's disgusting when you're a little kid. Mm. But then, teenage years, I don't remember the first time I had my full beer. Maybe, like, 12, 13. Me and my friend snuck beer. We were troublemakers back then. Sure. Yeah. I remember, like, hey, it, Dad. It, it didn't taste this good. Yeah, Dad, what are you drinking? <laughs> like, here, a beer. Like, can I try it? Like, no. Like, come on, let me try You know, all right. Like, it tastes like shit. Why are you drinking so many of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was, the first time I had my full first full beer, I was in ninth grade. There was a party down in the brickyard behind my house. And uh, my brother was already moved out of the house. And I was like, man, I'll be cool if I went down there. So I like snuck out my back door and I legit went down into the woods because that's where the party was. I went uh -huh. down like, oh, Bermudez, like because my older brother had like established like, hey, we're cool, you know, right, right, right. but like I had to like live in his foot like, yo, you want beer? <laughs> like, sure, dude, dude, I nursed this beer for probably three hours. One beer. Yep. One beer. <laughs> Didn't like the taste of it. Like, you want another one? Like, no, nope, still. I got another one. I yeah, did my third yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Takes um, a little, yeah. Why is it? I don't know what it, it, it does. It, it, at some point, you want to taste beer. Then you accumulate this palate where you're like, wow, I just want better tasting beer. That's yeah. what I was wondering. Like, when does the palate change? Because I remember vividly when I was a little kid trying a Budweiser and being like, this is my dad giving me a little sip at my grandmother's house. And me being like, this is the worst thing I ever I, tasted. I think that's the problem is that, uh, you know. At that age, Budweiser and upstate, it was Genesee. My dad would have Genesee, but he'd also have some other classic beers. But uh, it just doesn't taste that great. Yeah. But maybe if you tasted one of these. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> therapy session. IPAs, and then I remember being a, a teenager and like shoulder tapping. Like, yo, you can get me and my friends a 12 pack. Yo, you can get me and my friends a 24 pack. And Damn, what? You asked your teacher? Shoulder <laughs> tapping. You <laughs> no, never heard that term? Like, yeah, shoulder tapping? At a store or something. Yeah, like, like you yeah. stand outside 7 Eleven, oh. go, hey, can you get us beer? Hey, well, can you get okay. us beer? Yeah, not so uncommon. I remember doing that myself. Yeah. And then you'll get the cool kid, the cool 24, 25 year old, 21 year old that's like, yep, give me your money. Well, I was cool because my older brother could buy beer. Yeah, oh. I didn't have like, that. Yo, Dean. Nice. Like, when I started like drinking, I think he might have been 21 because he's five years older than me. Um, but I actually remember, I think I went to another party in Pennsylvania with my buddies and like, dude, like I don't drink, like I'm an athlete. Like this is bad for me. 
Like, I don't like the taste of it. This is stupid. So what I did at this one party, I was handed a beer, sipped it, sipped it. I'm like, oh, man, it's like almost done. I went into – it was a Coors Light. <laughs> I went into the kitchen, poured it out, filled the beer up with orange juice, <laughs> went back into, like, the living room where it was, and I was, like, sipping on it. And then I started acting drunk. drunk. <laughs> yeah, that's a stage you go through, too. Yeah. I, I peed on the guy's rug later, like, oh, man, I'm so drunk. <laughs> I, I, I never went through the acting drunk. You've been through that, Rick? Oh. Uh, I think. As a youth? You know, freshman in college, uh, you drink a lot of stuff, and then you're so excited to be at, a, like, a college party in a fraternity or something, and you're like, you just, you just get a little crazy yeah. to act a little drunk. Do you remember the first time you got drunk, Stan? I do. All right, go ahead, hit it. I was the first time I got like plastered was I it was my si- my sister's sweet sixteen so my sister's like two and a half three years older than me I was probably like right. thirteen okay and all her friends someone snuck beer in and then all her friends my parents were there all her friends were like taking me around the fence and were like drink this quick and I was just like what? that's disgusting <laughs> but then like three or four in I'm like oh my god I'm so fucked up you're like, pretty I'm, I was mangled <laughs> yeah like hitting on my sister's friends wow. Yeah. Your just, parents were like, Stan. Oh, I got in trouble. I, they uh, were like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, Samantha. What do you mean, what am I doing? Yeah. What do you mean, what am I doing? And then when my parents discovered that there was alcohol at the party, they like kind of flipped out. Got you. Like there's alcohol at a fucking. Yeah, right. <clears throat> well, actually, it might have been a 15th birthday, actually. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it wasn't our sweet 16. It was a 15th birthday. Thanks. Rick, do you remember the first time you got uh, intoxicated? First time I got drunk. Probably freshman in high school. That seemed to be like all the football parties and uh, all the parties there had to include some kind of drinking. Right. And I've always been kind of the beer guy since I can remember, like the guy who would make all the efforts, get the get the beer, invite all the people, take the money, find someone to buy the beer, had the fake ID early in life. So you had <laughs> you just, you just knew how to get it, how to I'm telling you, I sell it. A little early. Crazy. He's a fan of beer. But uh, my, my sister's two years older than me, and she was having a party with her friends, and my friends happened to be you know, younger brother and sisters of their friends. At 16, I had the fake ID. I was buying beer balls. Matt's beer balls at the grocery store where the lady's like, oh, I think I know your sister. I'm like, yeah, I'm her older you brother. You probably <laughs> loved being a brother to an older sister. Yeah. yeah. It was good. She had yeah. sleepovers, and you're like, hey. Well, you know, yeah, you know. Come on. Her friends thought I was cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It's a good thing I have two boys. I don't have to worry about that, like, mischief, like, going on. Like, oh. Uh, I used uh. to clean up with my sister's friends. Uh. Clean up. Yeah, my sister adored me, and that helped, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. She, she was, wasn't like, hey. No. Rick, stay away from Susie. Honestly, wherever she went, she wanted me to go, too. And together, we had a blast. So I was, I was always in. Wow. So was she was like a pretty in. solid wing, wing woman, huh? She really was. I think one day she's like, you know, I think you've seen too many of my, my uh, friends. And uh, we have to cool for a while. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Now, me and my sister are super cool. We became super cool in like our 20s. When we were younger, we really didn't get along. She thought I was like a little twerp. I thought she was a bitch. So like, I used to, <laughs> I used to hook up with her friends. And they'd be like, don't tell your sister. I'd be like, pfft. Fuck that bitch. I'm not telling her shit, you know? I'm not telling her nothing. Uh, oh, yeah. I actually dated, like, one of my friend's sisters. Okay. Because I would be, like, sleeping over his house, and she was there. I'm like, oh, hey. You're cute. <laughs> you know? Yeah, great. Yeah. I'm like, this is, I'm like, I, so I can, like, <laughs> sleep over here at a young age and, like, That's have makeout sessions and stuff. My sister had some slutty friends is all it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how things happen back then, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know how people, you just met people, like, from being next to them. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't, like, I mean, you know, you're a father. Yeah. Oh, you have a, a son and a daughter. I do. What's the age difference? Three years. My daughter's 15. That could be dangerous, 12. right? No. Be awesome for the son. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, but as a parent, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to condone, like, your yeah. house isn't a goddamn. Creating a stud? What do you mean? He's going to be a stud. What do you, 
You're an idiot. <laughs> well, how am I an idiot? I'm not saying he should hook up with all of his sister's friends. I'm saying he's going to have an... What I As had, a parent. What I had was... Your house isn't a fucking, like, motel or anything, like... Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be a motel. I'm saying he's going to be a stud in the sense that he's going to have an older sister who's going to show him and train him in, like, don't treat girls like that, and this is how you should treat them. How do I know? Because I'm a girl. Well, that's fair. This is what yeah. my friends say. You know, yeah. this is what my girlfriends say. This yeah, is what girls are like. Yeah, but we're saying in the, in the terms of him being like, oh, hey... Three years in, in high school is that's an aggressive number. That's what that's I. A, that's have. a high. That's a senior when you're a freshman. So I was a freshman. Right, my right. sister was a senior. Right. Like that's that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So Once you get out of school or you hit like twenty one. Obvious, obviously, yeah, but, but yeah. like in those like one year is like oh he's younger. Yeah. Like no. Right. Yeah, three well, years. Yeah, it's a little dramatic, you know. Well, another way you could put it is that's like a freshman in high school versus a middle, like a a <laughs> fifth grader Jesus. about to go into middle when school. When you're looking at that way, it just yeah, now it gets creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, can, you can make it creepy, absolutely. It's like, so we got away from. So my first time I got drunk, I was I think I was in tenth grade. I uh, could have been in ninth grade. Yeah. But I was hanging out with juniors, so I was on JV in football. These guys were. They're on, they're on varsity. Like, yeah. yo, come over. It was like me and three other juniors. Like, hey, want well, beer? It's like pure pressure at its, at its finest. Like, yeah. yep. Right. So I'm kind of drinking these beers with these guys. I think I had like four. And I was like, woo. And we were drinking Bud Lights. And I remember we left his house to go. I think maybe the one guy smoked cigarettes. We had good cigarettes. And I was like sprinting up and down the road. I'm like, I'm, he's like, dude, you're drunk. I'm like, no way. Look how fast I am. I'm like <laughs> sprinting. I'm like, no shit. And I was denying being drunk, but I had never known what drunk right. was. You just thought you felt great. Felt yeah, great. I was like, I feel. I feel super confident. Yeah, I feel super energy. fast. I yeah. feel awesome right yeah, now. the beer muscles. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, there's this correlation between, in terms of people liking beer, it's, this taste makes me feel this way, and this connection happens. A huge psychological component. Yes. Where, I, like, yep, that's delicious. I was going to say, yes. beer probably, like, taps into your dopamine and makes yeah, you think, like, absolutely. ooh, feel, feel awesome right I now. I think uh, 80% of why people enjoy a certain beer uh, is because the experience they had while drinking it. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. so. And Can I, I pause this real quick? Like, what, sure. we have three empty beers we right do, now. We do, but it's sad. Can we uh, take a short break and? Uh, we could. Or, yeah. let's see. I don't know. Is anyone else around? Or I could go get some, or Stan could go get some. I mean, if you want to send me over there, I'll go grab them. You guys could talk about we how can. you guys met something. I, I have a better plan. Greg Mace, get a, my head brewer. If we can get a beer, Wench. If I, if I can wave him down, I would just call him. Yeah, like, hang on. Well, hook him up. <laughs> let's, we're going to call <laughs> him. What. He's going to be on the All show. Right. For one, for one second. Oh, Greg is hysterical. Greg is the best. Now, oh, yeah, should you... I call him? Would he not answer my call? Maybe it's working. Uh, He'll definitely no. answer your call. It'll be funny. He's, he's going to hear all of us through the phone call. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, as soon as I walked in, you're going to plug in right there. Oh, right on. Okay. And that's how he's going to be on the show. Wow. It's high tech. You should you should intro him and everything. Just. There you go. Sometimes we well, tried. We got into using a laptop for phone calls because we always have like this little noise when you plug it in. Gotcha. We'll edit that out in post, though. All right. We're calling Greg Mace. Greg Mace has been with me since day one. Okay. He's a phenomenal guy. Phenomenal brewer. Had he been a brewer prior to getting the job? He did. He, you uh, got to turn him up. Turn him up. I yeah. hear him ringing, but yeah, he's like stupid low. Greg. No, he's not. No, he's on there. He's on there. It Greg. just might be stupid low right now. What's going on, Stan? I don't know. I don't know if we can hear him. He, I gave him the wave. Can you hear him now? I think he's coming over. He's no, he hung up. Uh. Yeah, I don't know why it was doing that. He gets a little nervous, but once you get him going, oh, he's stupid. Call him again. That was a fail. Complete fail, Stan. That's how I'm talking. Bro, sometimes the equipment fucking doesn't work. No, I don't know what you're doing over there, Stan. <laughs> what That's, am I doing over here? I don't know. Failing? Yeah. Jiminy. There's no failure. We've got thousands of dollars in equipment, and you can't operate it. Ah. There it is. You know, Leave it. It's a glitch. Oh, he's coming over. There he is. Oh, I wish he would just answer. We could leave him a voicemail. Get away. 
Can you just answer the phone? Oh shit, I'm sorry. You're gonna be on the air, man. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you're good. Oh, we lost you. Well, I hung up on him. He was walking over. Oh, whatever. All right, Greg Mayshear, head brewer, mastermind behind the uh, Great South Bay beer. How are we doing, guys? Oh, so you're, you're empty. He's the oh, actual what can brewer. You get for you guys? Well, I was saying these guys. How are you? Good to see you could, again. Could we just get like a, a couple different beers? Can we just try beers? Like, Absolutely. Like some, some like a flight. I can make that can you happen. Hook us up? Yep. Thanks, buddy. Thank Your you, favorites? Greg. Sure. For my favorite. Eh, whatever. A combination. Dealer's choice. I'll be right back. Thanks, buddy. Oh, he's the best, right? I'm a huge fan of flights. What's flights? A flight. When you is, try a couple of different ones. It's um. I guess you could probably describe it better than me. It's yeah, just so a flight is really, it's like a tray or a sample of anywhere from four to eight different beers. A lot of breweries offer them. Um, they usually, ours are four ounce samples of each beer. So you get to taste the beer rather than having to drink a whole pint. So, right. I mean, we have 14 beers on tap. So if you wanted to taste them all, the way to do it would be get a flight. Right, so you're not... <laughs> and now 14 on tap, that's all ones that you guys make in-house, right? Yeah. No Bud, no Bud Light, no Budweiser, it's no. all Great South Bay beer. No, we only serve our own beer. Yeah. Beautiful. We well, this is a brewery. It's not a restaurant. Well, I'm just asking. I don't know. I've never been. I've actually right. never been to a brewery. This is, my is that first, right? This is my first really? experience at a brewery, yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... First time we're here. The first time we're virgin. Fantastic. I should have gave you a little tour. I took a little tour with, Did um, you? yeah, I walked around with myself. I, well, I didn't get to go in the back, but well, a little, okay. what a we're going lap. to do is after we're done here for, uh, our page and everything like that, we're going to have Stan do maybe like little couple pictures. Yeah. Some I pictures do a little, and maybe a little virtual tour. Oh, absolutely. Cool. You have a very nice place here. Like as soon as I walked in, I was like, okay, cause yeah. I do a lot of carpentry and woodwork and you guys, yeah. it's a nice ambiance it's here. It's very un, un uh, Unexpecting. <laughs> yes. You wouldn't expect it from yes. this industrial park and big industrial building, but um, yeah, we've kind of whittled away at it and just you know. It's constantly it growing, right? Constantly growing. Yes. Yeah, we just keep adding things to it. We got a new patio out front, um, and we have picnic tables out there. We just built that was put up probably a month ago. Nice. Yeah, so, a lot of things here. There. So what? Um, so not Stan, something you don't know. This isn't like his thing. This is a hobby. He's yeah. a I'm an anesthesiologist as well, yeah. Okay. That's your main So that's what I did, you know, this morning. That's your job, this is your passion. Yeah. Well, I mean this is this is a, a it's a big job too. I have a lot of a lot of great people help me. I have a part, partners in the business, uh, Doug Davis and his sons Brian. Chris and Billy um, are doing a tremendous amount of work here and help me grow this, grow this uh, business. Really, yeah, because there's no chance you could, and uh, that's uh, that's what in terms of being an, because you're like an entrepreneur, no? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like you have a job, like you work for yourself, and you'd work for the man, right? You're not a contractor as an anesthesiologist. Yeah, I'm kind of independent. Yeah, but uh, oh, you are is it? Um, yeah, throughout the, throughout the years, we've, ac I've actually, I've worked for the man, but I've, uh, also All right. have, uh, my own business now. Okay. Thank you. That's Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Bye, Rachel. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel and Greg. So, um, Greg, what we got here? Yeah, let's first up Jenny. Should Jenny. we have him call in? Most popular beer here in the tasting. Can you call, call in? in? Oh, yeah. yeah, call yeah, in. You'll I, you'll I, I yeah, you'll be online. You'll be online. Yeah. Hang on one sec. Yeah, just call uh, Rick. Yeah, call me, and then you'll and be then, right online. And then uh, get behind Rick. You'll be in the picture oh, yeah. too, if you want. If you want to put your a face with the. Uh, Greg. Hello. Hello. Yep. Hey, there's Greg. There, there I am. How we doing? How we doing, guys? Greg uh, was nice enough to bring us a few samples of beers. We got uh, a variety, which is nice. Are they all in there, Stan? Yep. Greg, so what do we got? The first beer here. Oh, I lost him. That's uh, Jetty, our most popular beer here in the tasting room. Okay. Yep. It's uh, cream out, uh, brewed with yes. honey, orange blossom honey. It's he's picking up, right? Light. What happened? Yeah, he's picking up. Oh, am I getting here? No, yeah, yeah. You're off the phone now. I'm off the phone. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what I'm happened. Off on Rick's mic. Come on and break a seat over. Oh, but you can't quite. Oh, you can hear us. No, I can hear you guys just fine. We have the earphones on. I sound like. Uh, 
a little echoey and stuff. Yeah, I, I was on the phone for a minute. I wasn't sure what right was. Right <laughs> <Figured laughs> out some Jetty. Jetty Cream Ale, Jetty Honey Ale. It has a couple names. Yep. It's uh, our most award-winning beer. So Absolutely. this is Jenny Honey Ale, it's Jetty. called? Jetty. Jetty. Like Jetty. the Jetty, the Long Island Jetty. Jetty. Okay. You okay. Cheers. Thank you for having us here, Rick. No, this is it. Oh, you poured yep. it I poured mine. This is my thing. Yeah, so um, we've been brewing this beer for, I don't know, four or five years. Yeah, about yeah. four or five. Um, took uh, some, some serious medals in the beer world. We, we won a gold at the Great American Beer Festival for this beer. Yep. Okay. Honey Ale category. It's taken a silver also at Great American Beer Festival Following the year, year. after. Yeah. We got a... Uh, Bronze at the... Uh, world... World Beer Cup. World yeah, Beer Cup. in 2018. Um, and, uh, and some other awards with it. What are dark beers called? Well, there's a lot of different names. A lot of different names? Because I usually don't drink dark beers. I usually know that these yeah, ones have like the, like the... I can't come up with the word taste. Almost like a, string, like a sh- strong... Stronger. What is this one called? What is this? So that's tooth? Marauder. That's oh, a it's Marauder. bourbon oh. barrel aged This is a treat. Ale. So a very strong malty beer about malt. That was maybe yep. the best malt. word I could use. Yeah, yeah. darker beers are like what's malt. what's the alcohol content of this one? So that one goes into the bourbon barrel before it's aged in the bourbon barrel. It good. heads in there at about nine and a half percent ABV. Then it ages in uh, freshly emptied bourbon barrels that we acquire from a local distiller here on the island, and it picks up some of that bourbon that's stuck in the wood and you have this exchange of bourbon seeping out of the wood and beer seeping into the wood and then we think we might pick up about a percent alcohol from there so we call this one about 10 and a half 11 percent alcohol by volume so i feel like you are very knowledgeable in beer oh yeah too much what who who was like you know what or how long ago we're like you know what we should definitely take a beer and let it hang out in this fucking yeah. well, this barrel that had another alcohol in it and see what happens. It's yep. certainly not novel to us. I mean, they've been doing it for thousands of years. The, the Belgian monks and, you know, everything was conditioned in, in wooden casts or wooden barrels at one point. And, you know, you would, depending on how they would age, the Belgians seem to age their beers a long time. I'm a big fan of Belgian beers. Well, they're delicious. I was at Water Zooey last night. Oh, my favorite restaurant yeah. oh. ever. So good. Ever. Can, uh, my fa- absolutely, yeah, my favorite restaurant. I had, uh, That's awesome. I had three different. I had some Dre Fontenen. I had some Frambois. Then I had this uh, uh, Souffle. Uh, one of oh, their of course, IPAs. Yeah, the little no. Yeah, no. Yes. Rick, can I invite myself to like a beer <laughs> festival with you sometime? Yeah, absolutely. Deal. Well, you got to come. We got uh, next biggest one is in October, Punktoberfest. Okay, where is that going to be? Right here. We have a couple thousand people come down. We have here? About 30 different breweries. We have a huge backyard that we open up for all the breweries. We have tents out back. We use the entire brewery, though. The tasting room, the brew floor, and, and the back. That's uh, a blast. I'm in. You got to come. We can do. You want to do a podcast like for a portion of it? Do you want? We oh, can do that. Yeah, we would love to. You just... Roping people and chat. Could, about I could it, get eh? some uh, some bigger <laughs> UFC guys here too. Cool. Yeah, we'll get uh, any of the local guys. Whoever you want. Well, I mean, gotta make sure they can come. But yeah, yeah we were, you, you you're a big fight fan. We were gonna have Aljamain Sterling come today. Oh wow. But I think he has something in the works. Gotcha. Mm. So he seems like he's picking his training back up. Ali Quinto was gonna come as well, but oh, he I'd love just to meet Ali Quinto. he just he, he actually wanted to come even without drinking. He was like, I'll come, really? but uh, he said he would be able to come late. So if we did the show after 8.30. Oh, okay, gotcha. Great fighter. Oh, I yeah, love Al. Yeah. Is Island is surrounded. Part of his training, I guess, is yeah, he no can. beer. He's so. a partier. So. Well, well, no, he, he had said, because he fought, what was his last fight? Mm, I don't know. Uh, maybe well, May. He, he said he, yeah, so May, so early summer, he said he was like, Drinking too much, oh, and he was like, ah, "I'd better cut it yeah. back." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then he got a fight lined up. He's like eight weeks out now, um, yeah, and they gotta, uh, yeah, they got, they got a condition. They got to make right. weight. They well, there's there. Hey, there's plus so there's a lot of people investing in them who are like, "What? You're out drinking?" Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were just out this weekend. Commitment. We went to Flynn's with, or last weekend, we had Aya Quinta there and Aljamain. Aljamain was toasted, <laughs> but he had just turned thirty. Yes. What's, um, Aya Quinta was there not drinking because he had just booked the fight. Gotcha. 
Who's he fighting? Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker. Australian dude. Oh. He's going to Australia for it, too. Gotcha. So. Wow. All right. Going to the other side of the world. Well, Al is a serious fighter. Yeah. Tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. When he gets, hey, when he gets a few beers in him, he's a lot of fun. I bet. Yes. Too. Oh, I bet. Al Jermaine as well. Give him a few beers and he really opens up. Well, like, Al starts getting a little vocal. Like, woo, yeah. Like, you know, like, like you know, I'll fuck him up. And like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> not, not like, no, he doesn't become violent. Not malicious like, at all. He's joking. He, yeah, yeah, he's joking. So, um, well, we'll get him down here. This uh, Marauder that we're tasting. Dark beer, right? But uh, very good. Very good. Very, very good. smooth. It's surprising. It's surprising. There's, there's a... Oh, you know, we've made over 100 beers here. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Absolutely. maybe 150, Absolutely. 200 at this point. Yeah. I can't even remember. Lost count. But um, the Marauder was early on. It's been like a – it's in the top five of the brewery favorite. This one? Yes, the Marauder, yeah. yeah. It this, almost has this, like a – Is there a malt? A malt. Is there a malt beer? Well, a malt, malt beers are usually dark, right? Well, I'll tell you, malty. it's a malty beer. This malty, almost tastes yeah. like coffee to me. Because in my head, I'm like, I think you guys should make a menace malt. But I don't know if I like malts. (laughs) Well, I like a Belgian beer. The reason why it's malty, we we use it. Malted barley is where malt comes from. Okay. A malty beer would just be heavy in grains. Okay. Right? Um, A lot more grain, more syrupy, sweeter. Typically high alcohol content just because there's more grains, which are producing more alcohol during fermentation and... So now, is the beer making process like an hour conversation, or is it like I can talk one? Yeah, how long does it take to make a beer? Right now about Greg beer, could yeah, talk I, for weeks about I, it. I talk too much about beer. Well, like how I'm long like does it take from? Right now, so hard. It's pretty simple process. Honestly. From start to in a can or in a cup, how long is that? Like the time it has to sit in a barrel. Let's give a, a two to three week, depending on the beer. Okay. Depending on the style of beer, there are beers that go longer. Mm-hmm. Then we get into lagering, which and is. Shorter. Yeah, lagering can go anywhere from four to twelve weeks. Oh, so when you when I hear the term lager beer, that means it's been in a barrel for well, not necessarily not barrel. barrel yeah. We have the big steel fermenters, it's, which is kind of the. It's been fermenting thing. for yeah a longer period than as opposed to like a lighter beer or something. True, lager. There's really what we say two types of beers: ales and lagers. It's really because there's two types of yeasts. Ales ferment at a higher temperature. Lagers ferment at a lower temperature. Lagers take much longer. Ales are shorter. Um, like all the beers that we have. What's the middle one? Oh, we didn't try that one. That's my favorite. That's uh, the Session IPA. Okay. Therapy we, Session. We our, actually our all new, started uh, off with that. Which That this, one tastes phenomenal. Yes. Yeah. This has become... You know, we made a Session beer before. Hopsy Daisy. Yeah. It was good. It was good. It was good. We were happy with it. But this one is I think I've had a dandy. This one, when I drank it, and I'm like, No, wow. this one is nice. I just had this one after the Marauder. The Marauder, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it tastes even a little better. Backwards, yeah. usually you want to start. Uh, yeah, lighter, well, I followed this, Nick and Pete. I was going Lights to say. You followed here, me. You handed them out. One. What do you mean? What do you That's mean? Fine. They were just here. I was, you, we think, went uh, here. Then you went there, but there's an order. <laughs> Usually you go from light to dark, no, when you're drinking? Okay. Well, that's what they say, you know. We're, you just, yeah. we're having fun here. You know, there's no. Nah, he's a rookie. Let's get, we don't have a lot of rules here, you know. What I'm just saying the general. General, you want to go light to dark. Yes. Light to dark. Like you know? whenever I have a flight, I go light to dark every time. Mm-hmm. And then I get another flight and I go light to dark again. <laughs> okay. A flight being one of these type of pallets of beers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Flight, uh, yeah, styles. Consider them styles. There's, there's over, there's a few hundred different styles. You know, the uh, Great American Beer Festival recognizes what 150 of them. Oh yeah, uh, 126 or something. They keep yeah, they 126 keep different more styles, more. which they award. Either. They do awards for each style. Wow. As a I, brewer, yeah. I feel bad now. I, I figured just Rick. I, I would have set up a mic for Greg. We have other oh, no, mics. It's cool. I'm just popping in and say hi. <laughs> well, luckily, we were going to have to send one of us up there. Luckily, well, we were going to wave when, you down. When, yeah. Hang on. When Rick leaves, you'll take his seat. How about that? That's cool. There you go. Because uh, well, he's got yeah, – I, I was somewhere. saying, I a, when I uh, – yeah, Greg, Greg's been here since 3.30 this morning. Yeah, I'm exhausted. 
also about three or four wow. uh, so, therapy sessions. So you're like the scientist in the back. Right. I am indeed, yeah. He starts the first brew as well. So we brew throughout the day, not only one or two, sometimes three brews in our system. Okay. Um, so to make that happen, you, you got to get up early mornings. I'd imagine back there that's almost like a 24-hour operation going on, right? Not quite yet. Almost. Yeah. Almost. I mean, it, it's happened. Something's happening all the time, but... Brewing. We're like this right now. Like yeah, Dylan is Dylan gone or he's he's back there right now. Yeah. Dylan goes to what about seven? Seven seven thirty. Seven seven thirty, mm-hmm. and that's the end of the exactly. last brew. the day. Yeah, end of the day. And then it starts every day at three thirty. It has been, yeah. Okay. We, that's uh, how you get things done, though. You got to put those hours in to grow. Well, yeah. And I mean, like I said, you guys have an amazing we've establishment watched, here. We've watched it grow. I mean it. it it used to be, you know, we'd do a three, four-hour brew, and that was a lot if we did it a few times a so week. So where'd you – I'm sorry. We, Wait, that's what I was going to say, yeah, too. Where, like, what made you, like – where'd you start from? Like, you were just – probably maybe at the time you had an apartment, you're like, ah, I like beer. Let me try to make my own. Were you always here in this no. building? No. This, this is, is actually our second location. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Greg did you buy and a I kit both, first to start? Greg or? and I both had YouTube? Brew, brewing systems, mm-hmm. right? You know, my dad was a home brewer when I grew up and kind of got the interest there. And then throughout, you know, uh, the time until I started the brewery, I always kept brewing, monkeying with it, joined the beer club. And then the, the reason how I met Greg was uh, Greg, I think, was only 18, 19 when I yep. met you. And he was yep. brewing his own beer. Yeah, I was, I was kind of getting away with something, you know, I could yeah. uh, buy the ingredients, but I couldn't buy beer. And oh, my parents wow. Were the other way. And so you were invited to every party. It was like, exactly. Absolutely. Get yeah. Greg here. Yep, yep, yep. And, get uh, Greg and his watermelon wheat, you know. His watermelon was, beer he made in his bathtub, beer. yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And wow. uh, getting away with something. Your saber tooth. Yeah. Yep, or yep, yep. Snaggle tooth. I don't know. We always can't, we can't quite remember how we named Snaggle tooth. Greg brewed it. I thought I brewed it, but it uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah. And Snaggle tooth is a, is a beer? Yes. Uh, Snaggle tooth stout. Is it still around? It's delicious. It's on tap right now. I can run and grab some for it. Fine. Absolutely. Twist my twist my arm, That'd Greg. Awesome. Can I do three you more guys beers? Hang tight? Yeah. Sure. Of course. Thanks, I'm buddy. on. Three more coming up. I almost have in my head like, is it Snaggletooth because it's so strong or good that you'll keep drinking them till you pick up a Snaggletooth girl? That's what my brain. Wow. That's where my brain went. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you uh, who names the beers? Um. Well, it's interesting. I would say. And you I, taste it and go. You know what's funny is actually, I have a list of my phone. I'll tell you. You're gonna. Well, how long you been here in Long Island? So Since Long Island, you, you, we. You grew up in upstate. Grew up in upstate. I came down here in '98. How old were you? Uh, I was 28. Okay. And then, um, you know, I, I did my medical school and residency, uh, Long Island, and then Brooklyn. And then after I finished my residency, I settled out here in. Brightwater is right next to Bayshore here. That's where I was born. Oh, at uh, Southside Hospital? Yep. Gotcha. So, that yeah, I worked at Southside Hospital. I'm still with that group now, but I'm generally out of uh, Melville, Melville Surgery Center right now. But um, So, yeah, I set up shop here, and then as soon as I got a residency, I could not wait to develop my brewing system because uh, through medical school and residency, it didn't leave much time. But, um, yeah, I, I bought a house right in Brightwaters and uh, started buying some, like, you know, a little bit nicer homebrew stuff, getting into stainless steel and three At vessel your systems in my house. Yeah. So I set it up uh, really in the basement. I set up ventilation. I had a little drain going and um, started experimenting. And two of the beers that I brewed and named then, this was probably in 2007, was the Blonde Ambition and the Massive IPA. I brewed the Blonde Ambition probably 30, 40 different ways. I love that story, though, that you started in your basement and now you're here. Oh, yeah. You know? So there, there's some guys when I first started at Southside, and we used to have little well, get-togethers in my basement, and I just I had so much with ho- homebrew. W- with your coworkers from yeah. Southside, yeah. Yeah. I had so much beer, literally <laughs> cases and cases lining the walls and uh, – not enough people to drink it, so we would just die. You didn't know it. You didn't know. Me- I was. Gonna, you didn't know menace and the man back then, or the old menace. Menace now working man. Yeah right. So, um, 
And I, I feel like, yeah, those were the guys, you know, right in the beginning, they remember me in my basement because we hung out and drank in the So, basement. I mean, you probably never thought about getting to here, right? So other people were like, dude, what do you do? This is so good. Like, why aren't you selling this, right? Or was this the goal the whole time? You know, honestly, I always thought about the brewery and... I don't know I brewed beer and I kept brewing more and as you do things more and more it started tasting better and it got to the point where I brewed I'm like oh my god I think this is really great I did beer it. yeah I got to that point that's what happens when I cook when well, I cook yeah. I'm like you know what I didn't think I could cook a better meal than my last one but I did it again you probably have the same feeling same thing it's like uh, I just remember- when I thought I couldn't do any better mm-hmm. I do better ooh. We should, we should do a cooking the next cooking with the menace you should find a beer recipe and use some great south bay beer or or beer flavored chicken or something we do cook with menace brewing episode Ooh. okay okay oh yeah we'll get you up there man we'll film it and i'll just follow you in all the steps right now cool um yeah so uh, so real quick so so what what pushed you into like you know what maybe i should start selling it were you selling it out of your basement for a little while, like a drug dealer? Wait, wait <laughs> no. I was going to say, you were selling it out of the basement? No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> no you know, it's funny. When I was home brewing, I, I got to the point, I'm kind of like, you know, I think I could have a brewery, and people, I would be respected in the brewing world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, I, look I at I just had a picture of you. Stan- Bobo. Bobo. I love the shirt. Wow. Well, Let's go, man. Bobo has great hair yeah, and wow. a great shirt. I'm loving the do, <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> That's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. Trying. I just had a picture of you, young you, standing in front of 7-Eleven like, yo, I got beer. You guys going in for beer? (laughs) No, I got beer. I got better beer. Come around the block. I got some in my trunk. Come around the block. uh, You have your your master's or doctrine, right? Well, I'm talking when he was younger. Right. And he was brewing beer in his basement. I was an anesthesiologist when I started getting serious about the beer. And it was at Southside Hospital. I worked with Greg's mom. She's a nurse uh, in the endoscopy suite, and um, she's great. She's still active and involved with the brewery. She has a book club in the same little room here every Wednesday. Wednesday? Do they drink the beers here? Oh, yeah. Oh, she loves it. The book club gets gets tore up, huh? (laughs) A little bit. Looks like I'm joining Uh. a book club. (laughs) Looks like I'm joining a book club. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, she talked about Greg all the time, and I'm talking about beer with everybody. And she's like, "My son's doing the same thing. He's taking over my whole living room. He's got this. He's got this, and he's ruining the kitchen." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, uh, "Let's. I gotta get set you two nicer." Oh. Good. No, we're... Here we go. She's like, uh, in here. "I gotta get. There you uh, go. I gotta get you two to all meet." Right, so go. his mom is a very social person, and uh, actually set up a play date for Greg and I. Bingo. He came over to my beer, uh, my place. And uh, he brought some of his beers over, and I showed my little system. I had some beers, and I we like clicked. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been, we've always been in sync, mm-hmm. like pretty smooth, like. And um, but at that point, I wasn't even. I don't even know. I entertained. Maybe I don't know if I said I was going to start a brewery at that point when we first met. Um, maybe I thought I was thinking about you it. You definitely were. Oh, yeah, okay. but I had also, you got you guys only scored my first job in the industry and I was You guys have seen Step Brothers, right? Yeah. Like when you guys met each other, like you brew beer, I brew beer too. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. That's funny. Some similarities there, yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. yes. But it was that was probably I don't know, two thousand seven. Yep. You weren't even twenty one. No. Uh close maybe. Okay. Well, I don't we know. didn't really see each other for Carry the a one. couple of years. Yeah. Yep. I don't think. But I always worked with his mom, and his mom, you know, he had a job. And then all of a sudden, she's like, yeah, Greg just took a, a position at Blue Point as a brewer. Which and is a, uh, Long Island, yeah, right? Yep, right here in Patchogue. Yep. Okay. Patchogue, Long Island. Yeah, big, yeah. I mean, kind of the pioneer in Long Island brewery. Mm-hmm. Um, big brewery, fantastic people. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and I heard that. I was like, oh, geez, I thought, you know, if I was going to start a brewery, I'd love to have Greg be the brewer. And then I started to get more serious, and I didn't realize how much was involved. And once you realize how much is involved, you're like, am I going to do this? Yeah. Uh, so you really have to do it. And it basically, 
looking at buildings, finding leases, figuring out the legalities with the state liquor authority and at the federal level. And it's a real education where, and um, one day I found a place, it was an industrial building, industrial zoned and I was making it happen. I called Greg, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I called him and was like, Greg, Quit. <laughs> Greg, I'm uh, <laughs> opening a brewery. Happened. Listen, I always thought of you as being the master of brew here. And uh, Greg had just gotten a promotion at Blue Point, and uh, they just gave him tickets to Great American Beer Festival, and paying pay for his trip and everything. And he was like, oh, man, oh, geez, I don't know what to do. Can I tell you tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. And um, I was, was like, yeah, you know. Ten years ago next month that I wow. uh, Left, yeah, September 14th, 2009. So it'll be 10 well, years. We're throwing a party. Anybody? Uh, no, we're not. Oh, we're com oh I was going to oh, say, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming. <laughs> okay. I keep joking. I might what is the, you, you know how the EST ever since the time of, what's the year of Great South Bay so Brewery? When did that use, start? It was, uh, can I cut you off for one second? What's yeah, this ahead. first? Oh, uh, so we're back to Blonde Ambition. It's. Uh, oh, that's the first beer you. Uh, yeah, one of the exactly. first beers I brewed. Yep. All this right. is the first one. Yeah. Blonde Ambition. Do you want to talk about it real quick and then get back to the story? Yeah. I think this beer evolved uh, when I met Greg. Cheers, we start, yeah. first started brewing this as, beer a, as remember, us. a Kolsch. Uh, I think we are using a Kolsch yeast on this. That far back, I guess. Yeah, yeah so I'll check the records. That's good. Moment. There's Ooh. a lot of history before this, before we even got to the point. I can see the blonde. Like, like you know something you meet a blonde, she smells fruity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is actually our most popular beer. Yep. The blonde? I thought the Jetty was. Uh, not in the tasting room. I just want to clarify for everybody. The tasting room, blonde and Jetty blonde go Jetty back and forth. I okay. call Jetty the most popular in the tasting actually, room. Maybe I just want it to be. If, okay. if you're looking at it, blonde kills Jetty. Blonde might kill Jetty. <laughs> it yeah. kills all the beers here, but Jetty's number two. Jetty. I mean, like our blood orange. So far, Sorry I've tried three or four. You know which one's my favorite? Yeah. So far, I have a couple more to try, is the, um, the first one I tried, the therapy one. Therapy. Yeah, that one's coming back. Right the therapy yeah, one is really good. Oh, it's a, it's a fantastic beer. Mm -hmm. Like Rob, your other, uh, yeah. what is Rob here? Rob is the tasting room and event manager. Yeah, the event manager, Rob, when he gave me my first one, I was like, what is this? He was like, you'll like it. It's called, and he said the name, the th what is the actual name? Therapy session. Therapy, therapy session. session. He was like, it's a therapy session. I was like, perfect. I'm in that type of mood. And it just tasted <laughs> yeah. amazing. Still so, has problems. It's a, you know, so... <laughs> The popularity of the IPAs is is the highest I've ever seen. It. Mm -hmm. People come in from wherever they want IPAs, and it's this hot. It's a, like a hipster, like a fatty. I feel. Why is this of, an IPA? These are no, at fault. No, yeah. The session is an IPA. Yeah. You can taste the different hops. It really gives. Um, when I started making IPAs, no one liked them, and now they're so juicy and so fruity and. Mm -hmm. And so alive, really. Yeah, I don't like IPA, so I'm surprised I really like that one. Yeah, I that usually, one is th good. They're usually too thick or too malty or too whatever to me, like too... Usually people complain about the bitterness, but... Bitter, that's the word that, I was looking for. That's like the 1987 version. So sorry, <laughs> we were going somewhere, I pulled a stand, I fucking jump well, ship. Sorry. I mean, I'm sure it's an right. hour, two-hour conversation. We were in the originality of the EST the, ever since the date. So right. I'll give you a little history, a little story there. Um, I called up Greg. I called him back the next day. He goes, I'm in. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. I got a Sick. I got a building. He never really asked me what the salary would be. Yeah, yeah. just go for it. Yeah. A couple days later, he's like, yeah, I was wondering. You know, what kind of salary? Like, Are you paying me? Are you, <laughs> 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 Are you even paying me? I just me? quit my just job. Quit my job. Yeah. Well, that's what's great about Greg. I mean, obviously, he's, he's got a little bit Hang on, were you still living with, you still live with your mom at the time? I was indeed, yeah. Yeah, time. so yeah. like, ah, who cares? Right. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I but, asked uh, him what his salary was at Blue Point, and I'm like, I'll give you $50 more a week. Done. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the offer. Yeah. Start have him look back. Oh, I love the idea of that. They have trivia night. I see the board over there too. You have game night, private event. Ha what is Harry? I was wondering what is Harry Potter night? Well, trivia. Oh, oh is that That's tonight? Harry Potter, Harry Potter, yeah. Harry Potter, Potter trivia. trivia. Yeah, Harry Potter trivia. That's amazing. Wow. Anyways, so Greg and I. He was hired, and I think was it 
How long after that? Two weeks? You probably gave two weeks notice. Yeah. Yep. yep. They were upset to lose Greg at Blue Point. Um, but nonetheless, I had the building, and Greg was over there helping the guy move, remove stuff from the building with the forklift. And uh, all in all, this negotiation I had with this guy, it all fell through. Mm-hmm. And I called Greg, I'm like, Greg, man, I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able to have our brewery here. He's like, <laughs> he actually said, well, I'm almost done removing the stuff, but, you know, I'm almost done. I'm like, no, nah, let's get out of there. But the next day, I found another building. Mm-hmm. So that was our that first location. Then... Saxon Union, very small. It was about a 1,600-square-foot building. building. Bayshore as well? Bayshore, yep. yeah. Bayshore the whole time, yeah. It was very important to you in the beginning. It was. Thank I, God, you know. It's awesome that we're not in This is going to sound crazier somewhere, somewhere else. else. Love Bayshore. Can we just do a part two of this on next Thursday? I'm good. Oh, maybe yeah. we could do a little walking and uh, check out the equipment or something Well, no, like we're that. going to take pictures. Yeah, we're going to definitely do that. We'll do a little video that. and whatnot. But just, I mean, we have some, some background audio, and, like, we have some gold here, I feel, yeah. and I want more. Our game oh, plan was done. to wrap up at 7 once game night started, yes. Gotcha. But we're like... I don't know. We're barely this touching is, the uh, surface. Yeah, we, we didn't got, even... We, yeah, we just got like, some, like, core play going on We're in, right like, here. day three of GSB history. <laughs> yeah, that was my posture. Is it, this isn't live, right? This is not live? It is no, live. we're very live. live. Oh, it is live. Yeah. It is yeah. live. Well, no, so now it will go on... See how the uh, likes going I on? I wish I we'll, knew we'll, I would. We'll, no, we'll save everything. It'll go on, on YouTube. That will be there forever. Uh, but um, I would like to do it, like, next third. Is that real? Yeah, we can do that. I got him on the spot. Like, yo, Nick, everybody watching Thursday? <laughs> What's the date? <laughs> no, I mean, we could do two weeks, whatever. But I just want to no, finish. Good. Why don't we do it next Thursday? I want to wrap I'll, up everything. We'll tr- try and get available. another UFC guy in here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of ground to cover. Mm-hmm. A lot of ground. Oh, for sure. But, um... We'll re-listen to. We'll send you this link. Okay. Everybody will re-listen, re- uh, re-listen, and then we'll try and pick up exactly where we left off. Is that yeah. crazy? No, no not I at all. I okay. love it. I'm we, in. We could literally. Start. Am I invited? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cool. We're gonna get you. Uh, I want the mic set up. The head. The head set. Yes. Yeah. yes you will have a Hook chair with your name on the back. I, maybe I'll. Yeah. Work up my posture. I've just been slouching. If oh, I, I thought we you were going to say work man. out. No, no yeah. oh, work yeah. out. Yeah. He's yeah. definitely going to have yeah. push-ups as well. <laughs> yeah. So, to be continued? Yes. To be continued. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. So, a- episode 43.5, live from Great South Bay Brewery. want to thank Rick. We want to thank Greg for joining us. Dennis the Menace, Stan the Man. Hey. And we absolutely... We're going to do this again, and we would love to do any beer festivals you guys have. Oh, fantastic. Any yeah. beer tastings. Me and Menace both drink. We're both also... Stan more than me. Obviously, but <laughs> we're down for it. We're, we're big fans. <laughs> oh, quick question. Stan, do you have any MMA experience? I do. Oh, you do? And he'll answer that next episode. Yes. No. All right, to awesome. be continued. Yes. That's Thanks, how, guys. That, that's how sorry, me and Dennis met. Sorry to leave you listeners in, in such a... Uh, well, that you ask, Suspense. whenever I talk yeah, about anything ahead. I've ever done, Dennis tells me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Nobody no one, cares about no you. Nobody cares about Stan. Yeah. Well, but here, I'll leave you on this. You know John Gotti? Yes. John Gotti broke my leg. That's uh-huh. why I stopped training and stopped doing shit. That's how weak Stan is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Stan's the guy keeping the thing rolling, making it, uh, you know, it's like uh, – there's the Johnny Carson and I'm the, the talent. Epic Man. I don't know. I'm the That's talent. A great, uh, the MC producer, if you will. The producer. Yes. producer. Yeah. Yeah. The bum making it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so episode 43.5. I was about to call you my Greg, but you're he's Greg? Not a bum. No, I'm definitely not your Greg. Greg's way above me. Greg's the man. <laughs> Greg's in the back <laughs> brewing yeah, up exactly. magic right here. That magic, mean yeah. we're like equal. Yeah, no. Not well, really. you know what? You, did you taste the stout? Yeah, let's hurry up and hit. Let's, let's hit one these two beers. We were talking about it. I ran out to get it. Well, should we go lighter? Because now I feel like sweet. a dick that I made you go dark. Yeah, you're right. So go lighter. I can't read. I got short arms. <laughs> That's so for sure. you guys aren't married. Um, what are we drinking here, Greg? Field 5 IPA. Field 5. All right, another IPA. Field 5. Yeah, I love the names, too. This is obviously yeah. a, Robert Mo- or a, Robert Jones, a Robert Moses reference. A Robert Moses reference. Uh, you know, the whole surf kind of theme. I saw that up there, the Robert Moses Pale Ale. 
Now, are all those beers on the wall you guys? Those are all beers you yes. guys have brewed? Yeah. Those are all our labeled beers. We, we stopped doing that about, geez, oh, three man. years ago, too. I like, know. If we kept going, there'd be no paint on the wall. It would be all posters. Like, so everybody that, listening, been, uh, continue to get our numbers up, and pretty soon we'll have a Menace in the Man beer. Absolutely. A Menace in the Man IPA up on yeah, the wall. Okay. Maybe a Menace Malt. Or even a Menace, menace Malt. Menace I'll malt. take it. Stan it. hasn't really. I'll take it. <laughs> He's just hopping on the bandwagon. Menace in the Man. You no, know, the, the band Menace in the Man bandwagon. Like Sanford and Son. That's dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, Chico and the Man. You ever hear of that show? It's always a twosome. And even like you look at like, um, what's that one show? Conan O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always has the other guy with him, Andy Richter. Right. You need someone to bounce it off of. You do. You can't do it yeah. alone. Well, when things get a little stale on the show, I just start making fun of Stan and people love it. Two, two or three people love it. Stands, that's it. Uh, two or three people that know both of us love it. And that's because they're haters <laughs> on me. But eventually, when we get a bigger audience, we'll I see if the bigger audience loves it. Well, well it's good. Only one person's like, yeah, you're so mean to him. I'm like, well, you're a loser, too. So Who's the one person? <laughs> well, you remember David Letterman with uh, oh, the music David. guy? He was kind of the uh, side, kind of his uh, friend oh, and Barney. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. always need a co-host. You always need, need someone to bounce. You do it alone, and it seems a little boring. For sure. We see yes. those guys who really like, kind of, little, yeah. they like drink and evaluate beers on YouTube, and you're like, it's lackluster. You need another guy. And also, yeah. what happens too if you get two guys kind of like menaces in the UFC? If you got two guys almost on the same level, it's going to be who wants to talk over each other type yeah. of deal. You right. need a, me and him get into that sometimes. Oh. Right. And then when we start talking over each other, like, <laughs> Stanley, shut the fuck up. I realize you need, a, you need a boss. Well, no, uh, no. Uh, like you said, we we have equal parts. I have, I've established myself in the game. Yeah. I know people, so like, hey, you want to come on our show? Like, oh, I don't know. That's yeah, sure. Right. I mean, you're like. And then he knows a lot about MMA. That's why I even like fuck with him. Is like, there'll be a lot of fights I haven't seen. He watched, or he knows a lot more fighters than I do, and. You know, right. Well, so. even we'll wrap it up on this. One of my favorite things is how this show started. It started over drinking beers. Wow. We went out to fights one night. We were friends. We trained together for years. We went out to fights one night, and then we just got drunk together, and we're like, yo, why not? and I mentioned to him after that night, why don't we do a show together? And he right. was like, let's fucking, let's try it. And then yeah. he was reluctant at first, and then yeah. the first couple of shows wound up being kept good. Like, yo, you want to go tonight? I'm like, oh. Well, it's good. You got the personality to, like, yeah. make it happen. Absolutely. You guys are both interesting people. He should be a UFC I'm, commentator. I'm a stiff. Dana White I'm, invited I'm him I'm to over Vegas here sweating. What? to try out, but he just got busy with whatever. Really? Yeah. You would, I think you'd be great. Dana, you, Dana didn't say, I get, come I've out here. I've got kids. I use racial slurs. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get busy in life. But, you know, if you do get on with Not Dana racial. White, st- stereotypes. Yeah. You've, Not even. How many times have you met Dana White? I mean, I met him once. I've seen him. I've been around him. He responds to his texts. He responds yeah. to his texts. That's good enough. He responds to his texts. Yeah. Dana White. Yeah, I mean. I mean you want to get in here? Well, no. You want to hear <laughs> I, something funny? Honestly, oh. Well, I would love to have it. I just think it's cool at the level you, you've achieved that you're in. I mean, you're a, one of the best fighters in the world. He doesn't realize. It. Used to he be. doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't realize. It. I mean, he's you, uh, used to be. He's still a real guy. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, used to well, be. Well, I right. hang out with a lot of humble people. Well, I, was say, no, I don't hang out with about. humble people. I hang out with a lot of people that humble me. Yes. For example, like my brothers, my dad, some of my best friends. Right. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Family and friends always humble you. You're like, oh yeah, I'm still that. I like still that. that. Whatever yeah. guy. And again, but we talk humbleness. about it often. We're gonna revisit it. We will get Dana on this show. Yeah. We had him on the show once. What? Really? We were about to. And then remember TJ Dillashaw? Yeah. He popped for EPO. Yes. Right when the news broke was when we were going to have Dana really? on. Really? So he was like, sorry, I can't come on tonight. Uh, Got other shit to handle. Like, so, uh, like, we had our one friend on uh, from G Fuel, a friend Sal. And in the two hours he was on, he had 50. Sorry, what's this? He had 50 text messages. That's a snaggle Snaggletooth. Snaggletooth. That's Snaggletooth. What's Who made it? Well, Flip a coin. Well, I'll tell you, the, oh. re- the recipe was 
Yeah. This tastes like coffee, too. My original too. recipe, right? Name was me, though, but like, we'll fight to the it's funny. death on uh, who's, who because, named it. Uh, I'll rough it. It could be because, I don't know, Greg brought some beers over to my place. I thought it was named Sabretooth. Mm. But he's like, no, it was Snaggletooth. Is there a Sabretooth beer? We, Not yet. We haven't made it. Well, there yeah. I see it right there, Snaggletooth Stout on the wall. That's one of our. That was the third beer we made as. Uh, that was it. Yep. Great yep. South Bay Brewery. But again, I love the decorations here, and even uh, back to that other point. You know T.J. Dillashaw. Oh yeah. His phone was blowing up. I had our friend Sal on the show. He was with us for an hour and a half, two hours. He had, and he works for G Fuel, which is a pretty big company. Yeah. He had, he had fifty text messages when he finally looked at his phone. And that had me thinking, like, holy shit, Dana White must get 500 text messages a day? 100? Uh, 100? 200? Right. Yeah. From Conor McGregor alone. Right? Just insane. <laughs> Ooh, even that. We didn't go any MMA. So let's oh, just, right. You saw Conor McGregor punch someone today? No. Someone. So Dennis is famous for turning down shots. Yeah. So De- Conor McGregor walked up to a bar and laid down, like, five cups. Uh-huh. And some guy went like this. So Conor McGregor set down another cup, and the guy went like this. And then they said something to each other. Conor McGregor poured a few shots. The guy must have been talking. There was no audio, so the guy must have been talking shit. So Conor McGregor punched the guy in the face. Oh, oh no. The guy had to be at least 50. Where is this? In the that US? is completely uh, Ireland. insane. Ireland. Well, in Ireland, that might be acceptable. Well, I'm he's not ha- sure. He's yeah, had I've this never problem been. with I've ha- never been, Hawaiians so. and Australians. So Dennis turned down a shot once from an Australian dude. And the guy was ready to fuck Dennis up. You know Tai Tuvasa? Yes. The heavyweight dude who drinks, shit out of, drinks beer out of a shoe. That was the guy? Yeah. Dennis was like, I don't want your shot, bro. I'm good. I'll, and the step, gu- I'll step outside <laughs> with you before I take this sh- <laughs> shot. Oh, good for you. I've well, tried- I didn't know he was in the UFC at the time. Oh, is that right? Please. But I've been different. Like, ah. And then when he watched his highlights, he was like, holy shit. That guy would have yeah, head, that guy head kicked me in the parking lot. Fuck. Well, I was He's going to come on the show. Yes. You know, I think it's interesting. At the level of a fighter you are, I mean, you basically can walk through life thinking you're strong. You're I was. You can I, take anybody. That's I drank. Wild, I drank yeah. a lot of beer. I drank a lot of beers that night too. Uh-huh. So I was like, right. But yeah. you know, a little fear that I have that is in the back of my head. If I'm at a bar and someone starts with me, I don't know who he is. Maybe he is a MMA fighter. Well, one thing that should be in your back of your head, too, is like I have Dennis Bermudez's number. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you know, that's, nice. that's good confidence, buddy. You've, hey, you've sponsored me both times. I'll come. Oh, I'm happy to. <laughs> Yeah. You also have Stan the Man's number. Dennis. Right. Don't uh, listen to Dennis. Because I have I'd Rick's have number. Fight. Do I also have your number if I get into any I mean, shit? Rick's like, yeah. He's well, Just in case, you know? No. I've seen Greg Russell. Oh. No. I've <laughs> so now, <laughs> um, Dennis, obviously, number six in the world. If he got video. into it, <laughs> he's beating someone up if he got <laughs> into it with Craig, someone. Right? Oh my God. But when me and Dennis go out drinking, yeah. I feel like Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard, and he's Whitney Houston. Like, anytime something pops You're off, protective. I, like, step in front of him. Like, nope, not today. Well, nice. good for you because, I mean, you have a, a name, a reputation. Hang on. When things pop off, I take a step back anyways because, like, I don't want anything. Like, that's me. I've never thrown a punch in my life. Are you – why is he calling you Whitney Houston? Is that – No, that's a com- <laughs> oh, total compliment. There, I get it. No, I know what you're saying. Very good I'm looking. <laughs> and I'm – Way darker than him, <laughs> and he's right. the star. You know, he's the well, star. Yeah. I'm the bodyguard, if you All right, will. I'm, I'm yeah. with you. Totally. That's good. Well, that's so good now I feel like trivia night's gonna get louder. There you go. Let's wrap this one up. Thank you again, Rick and Greg. And hey, I'll get in touch with you, Rick, and we'll set up something for maybe next week, Thank whenever you. your schedule works. Let's just uh, play on Thursday. We'll do the same time, and uh, happy to have you guys. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Cool. So, Menace and the Man, episode 43.5, live from Great South Bay Brewery. You guys have a, how can people find you? Can people order beer from you guys? Uh, well, well, they got to come here. Technically, I mean, our beer is all widely distributed. Widely distributed throughout Long Island, New York. So, give them the address of the tasting room. Give them your .com, your Instagram. Let people know where they can find you. Sure. It's uh, greatsouthbaybrewery.com. We're here in Bayshore, 25 Drexel Drive, and uh, Instagram is Great South Bay, as well as Twitter and a few others. But 
Yeah. Great Top Bay Brewery. Everybody look them up. Come down. Try some of the beer. It's delicious. Yep. Thank you guys for the time, and thank Pleasure you for joining us. Go. Thank you, guys. Cool. Well, see you later. Stay humble. <laughs>